Okay, that's what it is. So that's what I mean by the drift. On the other hand, if you go and read Ramayana, which is more than 14,000 years old, that's what I'm going to show you. Or Mahabharata, which is more than 7,000 years old. But you can read, and without even knowing Sanskrit, I assure you, uh, now today I'm going to go slightly on a different tension, but if we get time in question answer session, I'll show you a demonstration. Like I'll pull a random Sanskrit verse from Mahabharata and we together will translate it. Uh, if you remember, I think we did that in uh, the Chitrani Center, you know, the month ago. But it can be done. Take Marathi. Many people here are Marathi. Uh, how many of you have uh, read Nyaneshwari? Okay, very honest answer. Thank you. Okay, not many. But if you try to read Nyaneshwari, what you will find today, it's written in Marathi about 800 years ago. But today to understand, it's in Marathi. But to understand today, we need a translation of it. Even say Dasahod or Samartha Ramda Swami, not that long ago, less than 400 years ago. But we need a translation to understand what Ramda Swami has done because of the drift in the language. But that is not so when it comes to Sanskrit. The second thing, you need to know what has happened, but if it's a history, you also need a timestamp. Right? Somehow we need to timestamp it when it happened. And again, the beauty with the Indian knowledge system is that astronomy is time. Okay? The astronomy is embedded into these Itihasa texts in such a way, that's why we can figure out when exactly these historical events happen. Not always, but we are lucky when it comes to Itihasa and in the sense of Ramayana and Mahabharata. The third one, we also need, okay, so we have a language, we have the time stamp. If somebody composes it, okay, as a book, as an Itihasa, but we need somebody to preserve it and that gets done through the Guru Shishya Parampara. Now think of these three and see which other place in the world has such a thing. Okay, and if you have, if you can think of a place, we will discuss in question and answer session. My answer is there is no other place. And I have been around the world, you know, except Australia and New Zealand, you name a place, very likely I have been there, you know, in my life. Okay, so that's why we only have an idea, sir. The important point is, this is the intel inside that we must understand when we look at anything Indian. Do you know what is Intel inside? If you have a laptop, you know, usually there is a sticker that sits there says Intel inside. How many of you are familiar with the marketing campaign that Intel inside has to do? That's when this logo came up. Now you may not know that 286, you hear 286, 386, 486 and so on, you know, that's the Intel. Actually, that's like the brain of the computer, but many people did not know, I mean, they don't see it. Inside, right? So Intel has to actually go and give, do the campaign. In fact, what happened is when they went from three, 286 to 386 and people said, what's the difference? I don't know. I'm going to stick with 286. And they have to do this campaign to explain why you should go for a 386. Because you cannot show it. It's not to be shown. It's the same thing. The language, the Sanskrit, the astronomy as a time and the Guru Shishya Parampara is the basically Intel or I'm going to call it India inside. And I'll give you some glimpse of it as we go through these examples. But what is Itihasa? As I said, history and Itihasa, I will use it interchangeably, but there is also a difference. What anyone knows the definition of Itihasa? There are few, but basically they say the same thing. Dharma Artha Kama Mokshanam, right? Upadesham Samarvitam, Purva Vruttam, Katha Yuktam, Itihasam Prachakshate. Let's do this as a translation. This is Sanskrit, guys. Everyone will be able to translate this. Dharma Artha Kama Mokshanam. Dharma Artha Kama Moksha. Dharma Artha Kama Mokshanam. Upadesham. Everyone understand Upadesh? Samanvitam. For the sake of doing a guidebook. Upadesh. About what? Dharma Artha Kama Moksha. Okay? How is it done? Purva Vruttam. Purva Vruttam. Everyone knows? Past incident. Historical incident, Purva Bhuttam, Katha Yuktam, told in a story form, so that you remember, Purva Bhuttam, Katha Yuktam, Itihasa, Prachakshate, that's what is called Itihasa. How many of you have heard the name American writer John Steinbeck? A famous, famous author, okay, Graves of Wrath, you know, a California author. He has said very beautifully, uh, in his East of Eden, that is the name of his book, he has said, People remember those things if 
they are familiar with it. People remember that story if it is their story. Whatever is foreign and alien is forgotten, whatever is familiar is remembered. So he said, I make a point to write everyone's story. Now bring back your attention to Ramayana and Mahabharata. How many of you have read, not the original Ramayana, if you have read original, great, but Ramayana or Mahabharata in some story form, other than TV, and TV is also great by the way. Okay, so what is it? If you get into the story, it starts feeling like your story. That's why our Bollywood movies, and of course Tollywood and Hollywood and whatever the different groups that are there, they can take the same Mahabharata, Ramayana and continue to make movies and they still feel like, ah, I want, I must watch this movie, something like this. Games of, uh, what is that, Games of Thrones, right? I mean, you just see, of course in a very barbaric way, but you could see, I mean, as you're seeing this, you can see the archetypes of, ah, that's like from Ramayana, it looks like, that's from a Mahabharata, if you're familiar with it. It's a written in a such a way, in a familiar way, that everyone feels like their own story. After 40,000 years, after 7,000 years, we still fight. Was Bhishma right when he did not say anything during the Draupadi Muskara run? You know, you get angry at Kai Kai sometimes. You know, some people just cry when they listen to like, you know, Ram going to Vanvas and so on. Because we can relate to our experiences and that's the beauty of it. But remember what it is. Puro Bhuttam Katha Yuttam Ityasam Prachakshate. It's an encyclopedia of case studies. That's what it is. Okay, now we are on the engineering program. So, I don't know, when you become a professional engineer, you will get into tort liability and things like that. You, you read the past cases to see what kind of mistakes you should not do when giving advice and so on. If you are into law, if you are into medicine, okay, and these certain professions, you will see many case studies. Business. Do you have a business school here? Not connected, right? Business school, these days the MBA programs are essentially taught through like a 40 case studies or 60 case studies or 100 case studies. What is it? Okay, what is a case study? Puro Ruttam Katha Yuttam Ityasam Pachakshate. Okay, some of the things are actually not told to you. Because limitation of certain information, how do you make a decision? Some of the information about Ramayana and Mahabharata, we don't know whether Valmiki or Vyasa knew it or not, but it's not given. And it's not a coincidence. It's not given for a reason. So that it really makes you think. If you are in the position of a Bhishma or a Krishna or a Draupadi or a Bhima or a Yudhishthir, what would you do? Are you with me? And there is not always a right or wrong answer to that. So that is what is Ithyasa. We, we have looked at the definition. Quickly I told you the Indian inside or the India inside. Let me give you the example of this. Uh, anyone from linguistics? Linguistics background here? No. Okay, so nobody, so that's good. I can talk bad about them, but I can also bluff, you know, nobody knows it. Okay, something very interesting. In Europe, everyone is familiar with the Aryan invasion nonsense? Not the theory, guys, okay? You might have heard it as a theory, but it's not a theory. There is nothing that applies to scientific theory into the Aryan invasion nonsense. So from today, if there is one point you want to take it away, that is, you never call it Aryan invasion theory. You say Aryan invasion nonsense. Can you do that? Yes, because that's what it is. And we can do that in a question answer session. But where it began, it's a very interesting thing. Uh, 1785 or so, when Sir William Jones came here, uh, you know, in Kolkata, he became the judge and he started studying the Hindu law. And he was very fascinated by looking at, because he's studying Sanskrit. And then he said, wow, this is a very fabulous language. But something else happened. Before that, Europeans knew that their languages are, uh, there is a commonality between their languages, say German and English and French and whatever the other, Swedish and whatnot, and Russian and other languages. They did not know why they see the commonality, other than they are living next to each other and so on and so forth. Also, they did not know how to study in a logical, scientific, mathematical fashion. Do you know what helped them? When they ran into Panini. This is not a very old thing guys, after Shivaji Maharaj, 1785, after almost the great 